But Alex, let's talk about one of the guys that I'm so excited about this year. Over the last month, he's gone from a guy that I was meh on to a guy that I'm all in on because of the situation, the things that are happening around him. It's Trey Sermon. I'm, I'm all in on Sermon because we got Wayne Gallman getting cut yesterday. Jeff Wilson is on the pup, so he's at least out for six weeks with a torn meniscus. That's another guy that doesn't have a ton of draft capital behind him. This team could easily move on from Jeff Wilson. They drafted Elijah Mitchell in the same draft as Trey Sermon, but honestly, Elijah Mitchell, while we do like him as a prospect for being more of like a sleeper type name that was drafted in the sixth round, he is undersized. He has worse draft capital than Trey Sermon, not as good as an athlete. And then you look at Jermichael Hasty, whatever. He had a horrible year last year. He's slower than Elijah Mitchell, worse in the passing game. To me, this is clearly... Um, Raheem Moster, Trey Sermon, 1A, 1B to start the year. And I believe Sermon is going to take over at some point. I think it could happen earlier than later. If you look at Raheem Moster, he played eight games last year, so missed half the season. He's had a knee injury. He's had a high ankle sprain, multiple high ankle sprains last year, an MCL sprain, a knee sprain in 2019. This guy just, just can't stay healthy for a long, long period of time. He did actually end up playing 15 games in 2019, but only saw a 36% snap share, wasn't used in the passing game, only one and a half targets per game. And while it looked like in 2020, the target share was going to go up for Raheem Mostert, he got hurt and it just didn't happen. And now you bring in Trey Sermon, who has the pass catching chops to be a three down back, was running a ton of of check down routes in the preseason snaps that he saw. Had an 8% target share at Ohio State last year with Justin Fields. If Raheem Mostert goes down, I think the upside for Trey Sermon is a stupid level of upside. You know, this one's tough because I've been rising on Trey Sermon with you. Um, And earlier I mentioned that you snagged Gus Edwards in our home league in a zero running back strategy, you snagged Gus Edwards. And then the other running back you snagged was Trey Sermon. And I loved the pick. So I think you, you nailed it with what his upside is. But as I've looked into this situation and really today, like last couple days, I've started digging into what we can expect for Trey Sermon and like what is going on in San Francisco and why, what's up with these values and what's going on with the running game. You know, why don't they have a consistent running back that's been, their clear cut guy for the last three seasons. And and just listen to this, listen to the numbers, because honestly it's mind boggling because over the last three seasons under Kyle Shanahan, the 49ers run game has been great in 2020. uh, They were 15th in the NFL in rushing yards in 2019. They were second in 2018. They were 13th. So they're putting out good rushing seasons every single year. But if you look at the rushing yard leader on the team, It's not what you would expect. You would expect a guy to be going over 1,000 yards if you're consistently in the top half of the league or 2019, second in the league in rush yards. But in 2020, when they were 15th, Jeff Wilson was their rushing yard leader with 600 yards, 12 games played. In 2019, when they were second, Raheem Mostert, you said it, played 15 games, 772 yards. He led the team in rushing. In 2018, Matt Breida, 814 rushing yards in 14 games when they were 13th in the league. So my biggest concern from San Francisco is this pattern, this theme that we're seeing that's like, okay, I know guys have been in and out of the lineup, but each and every season, when they're a good rushing team, it doesn't matter who the running backs are, a totally different group of guys every single season. It doesn't matter, and not one has really emerged on a full year to be the guy you want them to be. So we've seen pop games. We've seen Jeff Wilson pop off for huge performances. We've seen Raheem Mostert do it. We saw Matt Breida do it. Shoot, even Jermichael Hasty had a good game or two last season. Tevin Coleman had a couple big games when he was there. Jarek McKinnon. Jarek McKinnon, exactly. So you see all these guys, they're in a rotation. I know some of it's driven by injury, but not all of it based on the themes that we're seeing. And the fact that they've been a great rushing football team and they still can't get a guy over <laughs> 900 yards on a season, it just raises a little red flag for me. So if someone could do it, it would be Trey Sermon coming out with decent draft capital in the third round, fresh legs out of college. So I believe in Trey Sermon's skill set, but then you also have to think about Trey Lance potentially coming in as the starting quarterback, and he's going to take some rushing yards. If Trey Lance comes in and runs for 50 yards a game and has a touchdown every now and then on the ground, like what is that going to do to further 
muddy this situation in the backfield because you still do have Moster. When Wilson's back, he will be on the field. You, I mean, they're carrying a lot of running backs. They're carrying four healthy running backs right now, which is kind of concerning for Trey Sermon's value. Mostert is still there and looks like he is the 1A right now in the backfield. So I, all I'm saying is there is some reason to be concerned. I know we get these these big eyes and we get so excited about these rookies, especially when they flash in the preseason. But I just want to call out that there is some risk there as well. But with all that being said, I know it sounds like I'm out on Trey Sermon. I still think Sermon is a solid flex guy to start out the year. I think he's going to get work. He's going to be valuable enough on a good rushing team to be someone you can throw out there and start, and he's going to be okay. And you mentioned it, Steph. If Raheem Mostert does go down, if he does miss any period of time, Trey Sermon enters that must-start territory because when Kyle Shanahan does get a running back that is kind of the last man standing, he's not afraid to, to give him every bit of volume and every bit of opportunity in this offense. That's why we've seen Jeff Wilson, the fourth guy on the depth chart, go for a three touchdown game. So if Trey Sermon is that guy for any period of time, I think the upside is there. But I just want to say if this group does stay fairly healthy and they have a couple of guys that are active every single week and Trey Lance comes in as this running quarterback, there's some reason to be concerned about the volume for Trey Sermon. I love the the throwing out the red flag, right? We I got so hyped and then you're tempering it a little bit. I think I think somewhere in the middle is exactly where folks should be. And all of your points were absolutely true. I do want to throw out one one thing. And and this is definitely narrative street. This is definitely looking historically to make predictions about the future, which we typically shouldn't do in fantasy football. That's one of the biggest things. Like the difference between good fantasy players and bad fantasy players, good draft picks in your leagues, bad draft picks is using last year as the only temperature check on these player values. But I will say this, the last time Kyle Shanahan had a true workhorse was when he was the coach of the Washington at the time Redskins from 2012 to 2014. In 2012, he drafted a man by the name of Alfred Morris, a running back, (laughs) who had This ridiculous level of upside, 1,600 rushing yards as a rookie on 300 carries. So that's literally 100 yards per game. And then in 2013 and 2014, was over 1,000 yards on the ground both years, over 265 carries, saw seven or more touchdowns both of those seasons. And during those years, you know who the quarterback was? A mobile QB by the name of Robert Griffin III. And so all I'm saying is if Trey Lance hits and this then becomes Trey Sermon's backfield, it's going to be wheels up for Sermon. It's going to be the two trays in San Francisco torching the league on the ground. In my mind, if we're looking at pure upside, Sermon should be going right behind Javante Williams in these drafts. For all the reasons you mentioned, I would put him slightly lower than Javante Williams. But the only major difference between the two guys is Javante was drafted in the second round and Sermon was drafted in the third. And that's the upside you're laying out. Like if Trey Sermon is this last man standing if the upside does hit and Raheem Mostert misses time and it's Trey Sermon's backfield. I think it's possible. I will say if Raheem Mostert's healthy, it's not going to happen. So you are banking on that a bit. But even if Trey Sermon's giving you good startable value for half the season and then you get a pop in the second half of the season, if Mostert does miss any games, even if it if it's just a game here, a game there, then it's definitely a guy you're going to be happy. Yeah, you're, it's going to be a guy you're happy you took. I'm at his current value. So I'm in. I know it sounds like I'm out on Sermon, but I'm I'm honestly willing to have him. I think at worst, he gets that Jeff Wilson role at best. He becomes Alfred Morris 2.0, though that that percentage chance of happening is low based on what we've seen from Shanahan the last few years. 